Presenting Orson Welles as the third man. The Lives of Harry Lyme, the fabulous stories of the immortal character originally created in the motion picture The Third Man, with zither music by Anton Karras. This is a love story. Well, don't worry, there's action in it. Arab chieftains, international gangsters, and a buried treasure. But essentially, this is a tale about one of the times I fell in love. Now, don't laugh. I'm not the first man that happened to, or the third man either. Now, Orson Welles is Harry Lyme, the third man in An Old Moorish Custom. Valerie. Valerie Darouge. That was her name. She lived in North Africa, claimed descent from one of the old Barbary pirates, and looked like the direct and miraculous offspring of a couple of the more personable Greek gods. Maybe she was at that. But her official grandfather was old Armand Darouche, owner of an ancient fortified estate a couple of hundred kilometers inland from Algiers. I'd heard stories about him, of his great wealth, and what was more important, its strange source. So the first thing I did when I got into town was to wangle an invitation for a gala at the governor's mansion. I knew Mademoiselle Darouche would be there. She was. I figured one thing would lead to another, and it did. Four weeks and seven meetings later, Valerie and I were dancing together at our rendezvous in the ballroom of the luxurious Granada Hotel, overlooking the Mediterranean. Harry, you dance so wonderfully. I, I float. Oh, honey, dancing with you is like coming in with a tide. Oh, oh you are a poet, Harry. Mm -hmm. Oh, Chéri, not so close, please. Madame Plantage, she is watching. Yes, Madame Plantage. Did we have to bring her along? But certainly. I could not travel to the city alone, not even for a visit merely to the shops. You've got plenty of protection without her, it seems to me. That giant Sudanese of yours and the red fez and the baggy pants. Oh, but Ali is only my chauffeur. This is not your America, Chevy. Here, the chaperone is also necessary for the unmarried girl of good yeah, family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, let's go out in the balcony and watch the sun go down. We haven't had a chance to be alone. Not once since we met. <laughs> but certainly... If you visit Barbarossa again, Harry, perhaps I could arrange for Madame Plantage to occupy herself. And your grandfather, the seigneur? Perhaps it will be a day when he is out to inspect the flocks. Mm. Or what is left of them. Those flocks of sheep. There is hobby, is that, that the idea? Hobby? Well, I don't know. It seems difficult somehow to think of your aristocratic old grandfather as a farmer. But, Chérie, he is much more. At Barbarossa, he is king, he is emperor. Mm, it certainly looks the part. He might be the very incarnation of that old Barbary corset who founded your family, Arouge Barbarossa. Isn't that what it's called? Oh, you know about us, Harry? Oh, sure, honey. I read up on it. Arouge was the greatest of the Moorish pirates. Right? He was no more but a Greek turned Muslim. Oh, yeah? His beard was red like the blood on his hands. So, after 450 years, an ancestor who was cursed by God and man becomes a romantic figure. Droll, no? Oh, Harry. Yes? What are you thinking? Well, I was thinking how perfectly beautiful you are and how much I love you. Oh, Harry, if you only make bouquets with words, no, no, don't. That is more than a verbal posy, darling. Oh, no, no, Sherry, no, no, don't, don't embrace me. But if you love me... Please, it will not be easy. What do you mean? My grandpère, the senor, I owe him too much. He and I, we, we are the last of the Darouche. Yes, I know this. He but... has plans for me to live in Paris for a while, a term at the Sorbonne, a season in Rome, in Athens, and... We can and... do all that now on a 
on a long, wonderful honeymoon. But I can't disregard him. Since my parents are dead, I am all he has left. But if I spoke to him, wouldn't he think of your happiness? Give his consent? I, I, I don't know. Supposing I drive up to Barbarossa tomorrow and, and ask him. Well, he, he will ask questions. Foolish ones, you may think. Such as? Such as... Who is your family? What are your politics? Oh, no need to worry, honey. I'm like a pair of socks, neither right nor left. Oh, my dear, do not joke with Grandpère. For him, it is most serious. Yes, I know. But you will back me up, won't you? Yes. Mademoiselle. Oh, oh, yes, Ali. Ah, your genie. Did you rub a lamp or something? Qu'est-ce que c'est? Madame Plantage a dit qu'il faut partir maintenant. Oui, je viens tout de suite. I must go, darling. <laughs> I left the hotel and threaded my way through the streets toward the little apartment in the European quarter that I'd rented when I first arrived. The twilight was sowing stars in the sky when I heard footsteps overtaking me and looked down at the stout, pink-cheeked little man in a baggy alpaca suit and fuzzy fedora. He kept pace, looking up at me with glossy, inquisitive eyes. Monsieur Lyme. Yes? Uh, permit me to introduce myself. He drew a wallet from his pocket and flipped it open. The identity card beneath its plastic shield stared up at me. Pierre Jules Charon, police detective. You remain in Algiers much longer. A week or so, perhaps. Why? The length of your stay is a compliment to our city, monsieur. Oh, oh. Well, I've always felt that you can't really know a place unless you live there for a while. True, true, but uh, when you've stopped over in Palermo, monsieur... Palermo? Yes, just before sailing for Algiers... Did you meet there one calling himself Pierre Dubois? Dubois? Only his name is not Dubois, monsieur. It is Mario Marteau. Oh? And what's he done? Oh, many things, monsieur, including murder. He fled Algiers some time ago. His trail was picked up at Palermo. But would he be likely to return to Algiers? Oh, evidently he has. A British art dealer has identified his picture as one of several bandits who tortured and robbed him last week. Oh, I see. A dangerous man, monsieur. Yes, hmm. We think perhaps he is a lieutenant of El Sikina. El... Uh, who? El Sikina, a Bedouin outlaw, one of our local gangster leaders. If it occurs that you see Mario Marteau I'll again... I'll give you a ring, you can be sure. A ring? Uh, on the telephone. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> of course, we've got merci, monsieur. <laughs> merci. Oh waddled away into the gathering twilight. How many pieces of my past did he dug up? A forged passport, detected with a parasurity. But no, no, it was not. He'd have picked me up for sure if he had. Or was this another one of those cat and mouse games? Couldn't tell. Went on to my apartment. When I got there and put my key in the lock, it refused to turn. The door was already unlocked. Come on in, Ami. Do not just stand there and stare. Mario. What are you doing here? El Sikina's treasury is getting low. It was necessary to get money at once. Oh. He is getting impatient with you, Harry. Impatient? Honey. You know who just stopped me on the street? A police agent. Asking questions about you. Mm. Tell me something now. new. Well, perhaps I will. That legend you told me in Palermo, you know, about... Arouge Barbarossa bearing a billion francs worth of gold cups and things like that. It cave. is no legend. Maybe not. Anyway, I did some research in the government library. So? Arouge Barbarossa actually captured a galleon back in 1504, which the Pope had sent from Genoa, loaded with gold dust and wine for the use of the church. He was pursued by warships and hid his loot in a cave on the coast somewhere between Algiers and Bougie. There used to be a legend that Arouge and his crew returned to the cave once every year. Rising from hell, you know, to celebrate their capture and toast their loot and sacramental wine. Now, wine, eh? Yes, an old Moorish custom, no the doubt. The Koran does not permit Muslims to drink, my friend. Arouge was a Greek variety, and his courses wrote their own Koran. I am not man. interested in fairy tales. Well, neither am I, Mario. According to the records, the galleon Arouge captured was loaded with newly mined gold dust for the goldsmiths of Civitavecchia. There's no mention of finished gold articles. I do not care a sou what the records say. All I know is what I see now. Old Armand Arouche this past year has sold numerous antiques of pure gold to dealers. The Englishman we robbed had a 16th century cup he bought from Darouche okay. just two weeks okay, ago. Okay, okay, you just leave it to me. I'll find out soon enough just where the stuff is hidden. Good. You have just 24 hours 
What? If you still have not secured the necessary information, El Sakina will take steps to obtain it himself. Meaning just what? Meaning he may have to visit Barbarossa personally. I see. And as for you, Harry, your services will be dispensed with permanently. I am sure you understand. Yes, yes, I think I understand. The sun was high when I woke up the next morning. I dressed carefully, hired a limousine, an expensive-looking one, and drove out from Algiers toward the ancient estate of Barbarossa. I pulled up before the villa of Signor Armand Darouge. It was broad and sprawling. There were narrow embrasures for windows. The old house was like a lonely fortress in the blazing heat. I'd expected Valerie to meet me at the door, but... Instead, a silent Arab servant bowed me in. Monsieur Lyme, please come in. Ah, oh, Monsieur Darouche. It's uh, very good to find you at home, sir. I was, I was hoping to speak to you. Huh. Uh, yes, you? yes. Uh, your granddaughter and <clears throat> your granddaughter and I, Signor. Is... But of course, your charming campaign to win her hand. Did you imagine I would not wonder who you are? That I would not take the trouble to find out? Find out what? I, I told you all you about it. And an excellent story it was. But the police this morning have told a story that is quite different. Police? Your record, monsieur. Algeria does not welcome such as you. Ali! A door opened at the other end of the room, and the giant Sudanese stepped in, red fez, baggy pants and all. This time, however, something new had been added. A gay bandolier of cartridges and a rifle. A rifle whose black muzzle stared at me as the old man pocketed his automatic and turned to a telephone on a nearby table. I will arrange for you a police escort back to Algiers, monsieur. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. Ah, oh. la parine ne fonctionne pas. The telephone service will no doubt improve itself later. In the meantime, Ali will convey you to a guest room suitable for you. Listen, I, if, if I've made any mistakes in the past, it's, it's well, well, after all, none of us are perfect. Huh. But I, I do love your granddaughter, monsieur, and I have information of the utmost importance for you. I, I didn't want to alarm her, but I've uncovered a plot. Uh, a plot? It's true. I swear it's true. El Sikina thinks you've discovered a great treasure buried by a Arun Barbaros. What? It's fantastic, of course, but Check I... call. So that is your game. Now, wait. A uh... spy for a Bedouin gangster. Coming to my home, making love no, to no, my No, 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 listen to me. For your sake, El Sakina is no friend of mine. He may raid Barbarossa this very night. Ah, what tale is this? You expect me to believe well, you'd you? better believe me. If it were the truth, which I doubt, why should you warn me? What do you expect to get out of this? Your friendship. Ah, my friendship. Plus, monsieur, naturally, there's a plus. Plus a nominal percentage of the loot left by your illustrious ancestors. Ali, je perds patience. Take him out before I kill him. The guest room in which Ali locked me featured primarily an iron door, naked stone walls, and a single barred window. Hmm. The hours passed. The shadows lengthened. And nothing whatever happened except that I got thirsty. Was the old devil going to keep me here until I died from thirst? Surely he'd gotten his blasted call through to Algiers by now. The police should have been here long ago. Of course, if he hadn't... If the telephone line was still out, then I knew, of course. El Sakina, he and his raiders, they, they cut it, preparing the attack. They'd stormed the gate, killed the guards, and, and now here they came. Bullets came through my window, ricocheting from wall to wall. Sooner or later, I knew one would make a billiard shot that would knock me into a side pocket. But finally, the firing slackened and grew still. Harry! Valerie! You warned Grandfather, but he did not believe you. You said you loved and me. And you thought that was a lie, too, huh? After what the police told about you, what else could I think? 
But if you are not lying about your love... Valerie, you know I wasn't. Then take this rifle, Harry. Help us defend the house. <laughs> well, what is so funny? You're asking me to prove my love by getting myself killed. Okay, honey, give me the gun. If I'm taken alive, I, I'm finished anyway. We picked our way through the darkened rooms and corridors, stepping over dead bodies. The big Sudanese lay half-crouched beside an embrasure. He whirled as we entered. No, no, honey, too va bien. Better point that rifle the other way, lad. I'm on your side. Valerie... Are you two all who are left? No, my grandfather, he's on guard by a window on the other side of the house, but he's wounded. This way. Armand Durouge lay in the darkness beside a low embrasure. He turned on his side to look at us as we came in. Dim moonlight revealed his shirt front, dark with blood. Monsieur Lime, I have taken the desperate choice. I have no other. If you love my granddaughter, you will aid to obtain her safety. How? I have here... Uh, uh, can you reach it on the floor? This? Ah, oui. Uh, parchment. Very old. Just what? what is it? A map. I took it from its hiding place a little while ago to burn it. There beside you on the floor is a small piece of candle. Light it. There. The map of the treasure. Out of a tale for children. Then it's true. Oui. The smaller part remains where it has been for over 400 years with the curse of God upon it. If you love Valérie, you can buy her life with it and yours. You are clever, Lime. You can bargain with El Sikina. Save Valérie from those it's swine. These symbols, I, I don't understand. I will, I will tell you their meaning. First, swear on your salvation that you will keep faith. I swear. Now listen. Bend closer. I will show you. How to find the cave of the Corsair. Here, here is the key to the court. When Darouche had finished, I put the parchment in my pocket, stuffed the candle, tried to make the old man a little more comfortable, but his body had gone limp. When I spoke, there wasn't any answer. The master of Barbarossa was dead. Here they come. Valerie! Valerie, are you hit? Harry is wounded! Sir, help me. Oh, Valerie, Valerie, it's no use. Oh, Harry! Monsieur, oh, my God. Quickly, go. Mario! Mario, do you hear me? Tell your boss to stop shooting. I've got everything under control. Harry! I you. Mario! Mario, it's all right. I've disarmed him. You can... Good! The big Sudanese was dying as he brought his rifle butt against the back of my skull, but all the same, it was a blow that knocked me colder than a witch's kiss. When I came to, the brightness of day hurt my eyes. I closed them again, quick. The world was rocking underneath me. It took a minute or two to realize that I was tied, hand and foot, draped across the back of a camel. The smell of salt air was mixed with the smell of camel, and I saw the dark blue of the Mediterranean curving to the left. The Bedouins halted and dismounted. My wrists and ankles were unbound, and I was led to the head of the column. Mario Marteau stood there, and beside him was Valerie Darouge. Good morning, Harry. Did you sleep well? Mario, why have I been tied up? I kept my part of the bargain, didn't I? Did you? Old Darouge was holding me prisoner when you attacked. I broke out and forced him to give me the chart showing where the treasure of Barbarossa is hidden. I have it here in my pocket. Where? Well, it's, it's gone. You have it. Of course. Well, I didn't fail, did I? And I once thought you were a man, but I loved you. Animal. <laughs> Valerie. <laughs> Mario, those men over there, what are they, what are they digging? A hole for you, Harry. But why? Why? Where's El Sikina? Where is he? Hmm. Bring me to him. And you are supposed to be so clever. should have guessed a long time ago. You are El Sikina. Who else? May you both burn in torment. All in good time, mademoiselle. First, that is the matter of the directions. The court, mademoiselle. I told you I do not know, and if I did, I'd die before I tell you. Mario, I know. You? I'll tell you for a price. Price? Set Mademoiselle Darouge and myself free in Algiers. That's not much to ask. Mm, no. If this is not one of your little it's tricks... no trick. I will set you both free after we find the treasures, not before. Okay, okay. Now give me the map. Mm. 
We followed the broken coastline, and later that day, as the sky grew gray and dust devils danced, we reached the place. An old Bedouin remained with Valerie on the beach as I led them into a narrow break in the rocks, a break that widened into a, an enormous cabin. Their flashlight beams danced about and picked out a number of copper chests, green with age and corrosion. No doubt about it, we'd found it. It's the cave of the Corsairs. No, the ship! They're empty! Darouge must have taken most of it, but here's one chest, Mario, filled to the top. Look! Look, look, it's gold dust. A hundred million francs worth, at least. It's been left here to escape the tax collector. The rest of it! The rest of it! Well, sold, spent, of course. Oh, they've... They've, they've found found something. Yes, evidently. <laughs> it's wine, Mario. Look, sacramental wine in sealed flagons. Wine taken off the galley, hidden over 400 years ago. Well, Mario, I've kept my word, haven't I? Don't you think I should get a small share? Hassan! Ahmed! Take this dog out! Stand guard over him and the woman! We huddled on the beach in the lee of a sheltering rock, Valerie, our guards, and I. The mounting surf crashed on the narrow beach. The sky sagged like a wet circus tent. And two of the guards stared enviously at the revelry in and about the cave. The third, more devout, scowled. Keep away. What's wrong, old girl? You're shivering. Do not touch me. Two of our guards are leaving, headed for the cave. (laughs) The others staggering around, lying about the sand. They all drink enough. What the devil? A chest of gold dust. The only one that's left. Those four scoundrels are taking it out. What do you think they would do? Leave it there? But they're, they're reeling. They don't know where they're going. Hey, guard! GD! Those men with the chest. They're too near the breakers. They're drunk. Call Mario. Where is he? Get them back. I'm out. Part of that's mine. Hey, Mario. Oh. <laughs> You're many pieces of gold are oh. gone, Judith. Take it by the sea. There's the chest. Judith is carried. Rolling over and over in the breakers. The yellow dust swallowed up. Easy, <laughs> easy, easy, honey. Here comes Mario. You. You lime. Feed the shell. Hey, Mario, Mario, no, no, no. What's the matter? Don't Why? shoot. Don't shoot, Mario. I should know. It would be a trick. I kill her. Mario Marto collapsed, his pistol falling from his hand as he fell. Look at them, all of them. The whole gang lying around. <laughs> Incredible. What are you going to do? Take you back to Algiers with me. Then let's go. Those time won't sleep forever. Relax, sweetheart. They will. What? They will. Your grandfather put that wine there himself. He told me so before he died. What do you mean? It was for the refreshment of all who might come upon the treasure in his absence. It's a fine old vintage, dear. Laced with poison. Whatever happened to Valerie? I'm sure you're asking that question. Well, so am I. Come to think of it, I saved her life, and all she had to say to that was goodbye. Not so long for now. And remember, if you don't want to work for your living, don't bother about buried treasure. You may have to dig for it. <laughs>